Hello everyone, and Wazathi Hall. Welcome to the very first devlog for Sundermead. If you've seen the previous two videos, you'll know exactly what Sundermead is and where it came from. If you haven't seen them, then I recommend you go back and watch them. I'll have the links to them in the description. Uh, this is version 0.5 of Sundermead. In this update, I added some very large core features to the game, including the relationship system and the questing system. The relationship system will affect what you can buy from vendors and what you can request from the summoning stone. Um, Doing things for these vendors as well will also increase your relationship with them. So doing quests and trading with them uh, or get it up so you can buy more things from them and interact with them more. So that way you can, you know, form a relationship with the different NPCs. The UI for this is pretty simple. You just walk up to the character, uh, hover your mouse over them, and there'll be some hearts above their head. Um, and the, obviously the number of hearts is what your relationship with them is. The more, the better. For example, Dropness sells the recipe to make a basic tap, which is essentially just a sprinkler. Uh, but you can only buy this of him if you have a relationship of level 3 with him. Uh, this also affects a summoning stone, like I said, so um, summoning or requesting things will increase your relationship with the gods, which basically means then you'll be able to unlock more requests from them. Um, so there is the mines in the game. Originally, I had it so they were unlocked from the start, but they now require a relationship of level 3, which in theory should have them unlocked by your first winter. The questing system was built in such a way that it should work for modding. I don't know whether I'll add full mod support, but I definitely want to do questing modding. Um, so it's pretty easy to create a quest. You know, you uh, initialize the quest up here, so you set the title of the quest, and then all the stages, and the stages are used for uh, the save system. So the save system saves the quest you're in, and then the stage that that quest is in, and then when you launch into a game, it just loads from that stage. So you need to make sure you do any cleanup at the end. Um, and what will happen is it won't show in your journal if the stage doesn't have an objective title. So this this is done so you can have a background quest which handles other quests. So like, for example, if I had a global quest which handled what I could say to drop near it. Very certain situations, I would want that running constantly, but I want, wouldn't want it showing in the journal. That's what that's for. Uh, and then you can set the initial stage here. And here, obviously, we have then the stage. So we, this stage, uh, drop near has asked us to collect 100 stones and deliver it to him. So we get the stone objects, we get drop near, and we add uh, an option to his dialogue tree and say, I've got the stones for you. And then it runs this bit of code here, so it checks how many stones you actually have. If you have enough, he says, ah, perfect, thank you. Here's a little reward for you, gives you 60 gold, and takes 100 stones, removes the option, the dialogue option, and ends the quest. If you don't have enough, it will tell you, you ain't got enough, just come back later. So that's what you gotta do, then you have to go back down into the mines, collect however many more stones you need, come back, and you'll have enough to complete the quest. Like I say, it's a pretty simple system, uh, it works very well. And hopefully, if I do have mod support, players will find it easy to use as well. There is also the journal UI, so if you go into the inventory, click the journal tab, there'll be a list of quests that you currently have open. Just click a quest and it'll tell you what the current objective is. It's pretty simple. Um, I might add a list of completed quests and completed objectives later, but for now, I'm happy with I've also added coal to the mines, which can be used for the smelter, which I'll talk about in a second, and three new crops, which is cabbages, broccoli, and grapes. Um, I have a long list of crops that I want to add to the game, and I'll, I'm going to add about three or four per update. I've also added some automated items to the game, this being the smelter, the brewing barrel, and the skep, which is a traditional English beehive woven from straw. To use the smelter, you need coal and an ore. Depending on the ore you put in, you'll get an ingot out. So obviously a bronze ore will give you a bronze ingot, silver ore, silver ingot, and so on. Uh, the time that it takes to do this is also determined by the ore. So a bronze and silver is one night. Uh, gold and obsidian are two nights, I believe, if I remember correctly. Uh, you also have the brewing barrel, which you put in an item you want to brew. So this can be wheat, grapes, or honey. And wheat will give you a cup of ale, grapes will give you a cup of wine, and honey will give you a cup of mead. Uh, these are all different strengths, and they will get you drunk. Your view will distort. Uh, but they also have health benefits, so they give you health and stamina back. And the skep will give you honey every few days, and the amount of time that takes is dependent on the season you're in. 
uh, except for in winter, which they don't produce any honey at all. And that is version 0.5. Thank you all very much for watching. If you're interested in the project, please subscribe and go over to the Sundermead YouTube channel and subscribe to that too. I now have a Discord channel and a website where you can sign up and talk in the forums. So again, thank you all very much for watching and have a good one.